please have the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Acting as um, for tonight, uh, Trustee New Congress Gracious, please. Uh, we'll be taking these minutes and she will be calling the roll for the different motions. So at this time, Trustee Zupan, please call the roll. Trustee Brewer? Here. Carter? Here. Grant? Here. Tates? Here. Todd? Here. Zupan? Here. Okay. I'll accept the motion to reconvene uh, the meeting from last night to. Uh, Right now, I'll accept the motion for that. So moved. Second. Okay, I'll move by Trustee <coughs> Brown, second by Trustee Tate. Any questions? Trustee Zupan, please. Trustee Brewer? Yes. Carter? Yes. Grant? Yes. Tates? Yes. Todd? Yes. Zupan? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> I'll accept a motion for the approval of the minutes. Mr. Mayor, before you get started, I'd like to make a motion to table item 11B on the agenda. There's a motion to approve the ordinance authorizing the insurance of the general obligation bond. I'd like to take a Okay, that's your.
Motion is carried. Madam Chief, motion to approve the meeting minutes for the special board meeting for the budget meeting of May 12, 2018. So moved. Second. It was moved by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Zimpon. Any questions? Madam Trustee. Brewer? Yes. Carter? Yes. Grant? Yes. Tates? Yes. Todd? I'm going to abstain because I was only there for part of the meeting. Zupon? Yes. Motion is carried. <laughs> Matter pertaining to the business of the village. 
These speakers allow one opportunity to speak for over three minutes and may not engage in debate or counter reply to results. Will someone turn that mic on? Excuse I me. Left, I left it. Mayor? I left it uh, off, so. Can we get a copy of that that you um, read from today? Thank you. Hi, Mr. Renee Richardson. Can we please get a copy of that? Or I should say, may I have a copy of it that you read for all of us today? Three minutes is like 30 seconds up. Oh, I'm going to have to tell you to go ahead. I'm not. Oh, wow. You can go ahead. Hey, thank you. I'm here to talk to the mayor and to the board in regard to the ordinance about social media and how you're not supposed to have any employee on social media. And still, Joe Wizzawazi is on social media talking about residents and talking about other people. And I want to know what you guys are going to do about that in regard to what you just read. That is your own personal privy that you are privileged to say. However, there is an ordinance in place to talk about being on social media. The ordinance, I think, would have more presence than just a personal opinion. I have also been victimized, uh, Mayor Burgess, after I have taken my seat the comments that you had in regard to what I had to say. I think it is unfortunate because last week when I spoke about the Neighborhood Watch, you said that you attended several meetings of the Neighborhood Watch and you did attend a few. You also said that when you were there, the tone of the Neighborhood Watch meetings were political and that is not true. You also said that if we had badges to identify ourselves in the community, that would have been helpful, which we do have that was made by Gary Coleman with the Housing Commission. So I just want you to understand that just because you say things don't mean that it's true either. Judy Castier, um, in the past, Multiple people asked and got no answers as to the operational transfers and the legality of them. At one point, it was stated that it would be checked with our village attorney <coughs> as to the legality of using that. As of today, I have a FOIA that indicates that no documents um, are on hand for that. So obviously, the um, lawyer was not contacted and I want to know if the operational transfers are being used at this point <coughs> even though we don't know if it's legal for municipalities um, and how it's being done and why we don't have anything from the lawyer as to whether it is legal or not legal. Secondly, I would like to talk about our police department. <coughs> And I need to know how on the social media some of your in people are indicating how much money the police department makes and how we don't need any more officers and how we should levy a tax to pay more police. 
I don't understand where they got their knowledge from, but I disagree with what they're saying, and I would like to know, according to the police budget, you had X amount of police officers covered in that budget. Three of those officers resigned, which means that that money is still sitting in that budget. Why can't three more people be instituted and take care of those three officers? The money is already there. The only thing you would need is the training uh, money. And well, obviously, I mean, we have a lot of it because um, uh, you keep hiring more people. And at top dollar. Secondly, a few weeks back, I questioned about the furniture in the police department and how disgusting it was. And you indicated that you had already been talking with the chief about it and that you were having more meetings with him. And I would like to know tonight exactly how far did that meeting go? Or does the public have to get out and uh, beg for money to make our police department look like it should look?
Maria Escobedo, I'm here also to address your ordinance for social media. Why are you telling the residents they can't come up here and talk about that, but yet you let your people go out there and talk about all the residents? Which again, I told you many times, you will need the residents before they need you. And you're not, you were elected to do that, and you, to, to take care of the residents and do what you're supposed to do. And you're not doing none of that. You are a big disappointment to a lot of people because they thought that you were going to be the best and you turned out to be the worst. David Hanks is not my favorite person right now. He's looking a whole hell of a lot better than me. And for you trustees to sit up there and bobble all the time, remember that karma is coming for all of you because you know what he's doing is wrong, what he's done to the employees is wrong, and you are sitting and agree with him. But karma is coming for all of you. So remember, when all your lives are falling apart, and some of you already, I'm sure, have started with a bad karma, you remember what you did to these people. Okay, I guess that's all of the comments. <clears throat> As far as hiring practices, not hiring. As far as hiring um, people, I only replace people that have left the village. As far as from, that's all I have to say about that. Um, there were part timers, and then a full timer resigned. Yes, I replaced them, and it was in the budget. So um, I did talk about social media. We go back and forth about it, but obviously. No one that got up and spoke heard anything I said about that, so I have nothing else to say on social media. Mention the daughter. <laughs> Reports of officers. The mayor's report. Bloom. We will have a meeting. With or without you, but we will conduct business here today. Right? We understand, but you didn't answer We will conduct business here today. If you need to see me after the meeting, I'm right here. We will not go back and forth. I will not. Uh, we well, want to hear. What good does it do to go to the podium if you don't get answers? That's right. Because he hasn't got any good ones. If we're going to yell back and forth, I will ask you to leave. I will ask you to leave. If we're going to go, if you're not going to respect this board. And respect this meeting, I will ask you to leave. Simple as that. <laughs> Mayor's report, Bloom Township. Bloom Township is having utility, utility assistance October 9, 2018. Um, the eligibility requirements are identification, proof of income, proof of address, social security, gas, light, and water bills. All documents have, must have current and matching addresses for the past 30 days and include members of the household and the bill must be under $500. You can um, call, I have the number 708-754-9400. I have some literature at the back. And Bloom Township, for those who don't know where it's at, it's 425 South Austin Street. Uh, it's right across the street, really, from Prairie State House. Village Engineer, Mr. Jim Garner. Thank you, Mayor. Bids were received at the last board meeting for the elevated tank riser replacement project. Unfortunately, the bid amounts far exceeded the anticipated bid price and was based on recent projects as well as a nearly identical project that a contractor performed for the village on the north elevated project will most likely be rebid in the spring when more contractors will be available to bid the project, hopefully resulting in lower bids. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Mr. Mayor, we do have a clerk, I mean, a uh, report from the clerk. Was that the other, that was the inner office memo, Reverend Randall, or did you have a report? No, that, that, was, that was her, that's her report that was on our, our desk. Yeah, I, I don't have one. Go ahead, Rick. All right. That's in our office, no? Right, not 
think it's her report though. Okay. So as far as uh, from her first clerk, election authority, the 2019 candidate manual was revised again since August 10th, 2018. Since then, the petition forms have changed. The candidate packet at the front desk has been withdrawn. Interest individuals are again referred to the Cook County Clerk's website for new forms. It is important to note individuals who have collected signatures on the older forms should continue to use the same forms. Submitting inconsistent forms can be challenged. As always, people are told to contact an authority and attorney for greater clarity. This information will be posted on the official Facebook page and sent out as an electronic message. Telephone system voicemail. You will email two documents to assist with the usage of your new phones. For now, atop your desk is a list of temporary passwords. Please change your password immediately. Department heads, the listing for your phones will be placed in your mailboxes, phones for other works, the community center, and the pump house will be installed this Thursday, and the fire department on October 4th. Police department is forthcoming and will be scheduled later. Out of office. I will be away at a conference and will return to the office Monday, October 1st. Committee materials will be sent via email. Thank you. That concludes my report from Madam Clerk. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to go back to you. <clears throat> um, Mr. Mayor, I'm going The, uh, the refund will take place either this. So while we are facing a considerable learning curve um, to train our new staff on our new systems and processes, um, we're much better off today than we were two weeks ago. Um, while each person in the department is going to have primary responsibility for certain functions, um, we do plan to cross-train the staff to help ensure that we have some continuity in place. We are focused on building a team here. Um, and that concludes my report. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, you said we hired two more. Yes. Have they had background checks and fingerprinting? Um, they went through our hiring work? process um, through HR, so if that hasn't already been done, it will be done. Okay, can I get an email stating that that was done? I will, um, I will check with our HR director. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question for We have a question for We didn't get a question. We have a question. Mayor, I have a question for, um, um, well, I guess for you, I'm not quite sure if um, something should answer the 
question, but um, uh, according to uh, Treasurer uh, Suffern, she, uh, she said that we were supposed to get some reports, that she wasn't able to get some reports because of the uh, accounts, and she was going to give us some. Now, is that in the works now? Um, I think you're talking about the um, cash balances, is that? Well, no, I have the cash balances. You said some different re reports that I asked for. Remember, I asked for about 10 and I got two, but you said I couldn't get them because of you didn't have the access to the uh, different uh, accounts. Yeah, so I don't have, I did not have access to, um, to the checking accounts that we had. So that is in process still. So uh, as of today, I have access to the First Midwest accounts. But um, U.S. Bank is in progress, and some of the other banks are in progress right now. Okay, so if we need a report, we could just tell you what we need, and we'll send it uh, to us. Uh, Absolutely. Um, and also, um, there's an ongoing uh, request for um, the balance in the, uh, in the water fund. Is that something we can get to on an ongoing basis? Yes. Okay, so I could just send you my reports. Okay. Fire, I'm sorry, Fire Department uh, Chief Kowalski is going to read the. Thank you, Mr. Department. Mayor and Trustees. The Fire Department responded to 28 calls for the since the last meeting. They had four fire alarms, three vehicle accidents, seven ambulance assists, three auto aids, two dryer fires. Four CO alarms, one missing person, one smell of smoke, one odor investigation, one structure fire, and one gas leak. And that concludes the report for the fire department. Okay, police department's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and trustees. For the last two weeks, the re police responded to 437 calls for service with 29 arrests. Case of, of interest on September 22nd, officers received a call of an accident in on Catalay Village. Upon arrival, officers learned the accident was a hit and run. Vehicle struck a pedestrian with the vehicle leaving the scene. The pedestrian was airlifted to Christ Hospital for emergency treatment. Prior to being airlifted, the victim provided information on the driver since the victim knew the driver. This matter was turned over to investigations and is continuing. Uh, DEA National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is October 27th, which is a Saturday. The boxes will be in the police department lobby between 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. for drop off of any uh, unused prescription drugs. Coffee with a Cop is Wednesday, October 3rd. Uh, it's a day dedicated to encourage communication and positive interaction between law enforcement agents, agencies and the public. We'll be hosting the Coffee with a Cop at the Senior Center between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome. And this is uh, Rail Safety Week. It's the fifth annual Illinois Rail Safety Week uh, in cooperation with the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police, along with support from state, county, and local law enforcement agencies, and partnerships with Metro, CN, and Union Pacific Railroads. Uh, we're also proud to be part of this national promotion. Remember, making the right decision near railroad tracks can truly be the difference between life and death today and every day. So for more information about Illinois Rail Safety Week, you can visit uh, their website at www.illinoisrailsafetyweek.org. That is my report. Thank you. Emergency Management Agency, Director Alvin Maverick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Board. Uh, from the time from uh, December to, uh, September 10th to 23rd of September, we responded to 24 calls, three fire alarms, two dryer fires, four CO alarms, one lift assist, four gas leaks, four, muted, four motor vehicle accidents, one garage fire. We assisted Sauk Village PD with traffic control at 394 and Sauk Trail when the lights were not working. Uh, we did uh, assist the other agency, Sauk Chicago Heights Fire Department for smoke in the building with our fire department. Uh, we had one search for a missing person, which was not successful. The person was found. Uh, one assisted other agencies in the Illinois State Police for a car fire on 394. We also had one assist the Creek Fire Department uh, with a grill, uh, fully involved with uh, exposure to the house. Uh, on October 9th, uh, 
Um, Sark Village will be assisting uh, South Holland EMA through our uh, suburban mutual aid response uh, coordination for traffic control and participation in the annual parade of lights starting in South Holland and ending up in Homewood at the fire station. <coughs> On 11 October, uh, Sark Village uh, EMA was invited to attend the Park Forest Parade of Lights through their town and also to on the 11th of October, uh, we have our monthly smart meeting uh, in Crestwood at seven o'clock and that concludes my report. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I would like to thank the residents last night for the assistance that they gave us and the fire department moving branches out of the street when we had all the fire calls going on. We responded actually to 19 different calls and a lot of the residents was outside moving branches out of the street. I wanna applaud you and thank you guys for the assistance in that. That concludes my report, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I just want to say yesterday, when the, um, I guess it was called the Michael Burks happened, we quite naturally put the lights out here, put the lights out in the, seemed to me like half of the members because I rode around after I left here. And um, there was a lot of trees that had been uprooted and blown over. Quite naturally got the scans and debris. This morning, before coming here, I went around again to see some of the people that put the trees in the parkways or would assist. And uh, right now, Public Works is working. I won't say around the clock, but they're working a lot of the time to alleviate and get some of that debris out of the area. Uh, anyone that has a tree that fell on their home, please notify your insurance company because we're not going to touch it until they come out and take proper pictures and you get a written report from the insurance company. You don't want the village coming in and doing anything. Uh, you need them to, to um, have their insurance investigators come out, look at the damage, assess it, and then go from there. So it's not as if we're not wanting to do that as the village. Take the trees out, you need to get the insurance company because once we remove them, then the first thing the insurance company will tell you, do you have pictures? And did one of our adjusters come out? So get your insurance company adjusted to come out as soon as possible. Then I'm uh, pretty sure that they may have somebody. If not, then we can see what we can do to help. But we're not going to touch the trees from wherever they fell until your insurance company comes. So if they have to determine what, you know, their determination. So I don't want to mess with your plan. But there will be ongoing trying to get rid of these branches and, and uh, tree limbs and all whole trees I picked up as soon as possible. Again, I say that um, Public Works has been out there and they're still out there tonight uh, trying to uh, do as much as they can until we get it all picked up. Economic Development, uh, Director Joseph Wiswasser. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, please report that ZOD's Pizzeria is open for business. I reported that they were uh, opening in the plaza where the Villa the Pizza was located. Uh, Gas and Watch will be installing a CAT scale and will be pulling an additional permit for that work. Um, they've been approved by the state fire marshal for underground storage tanks and uh, you already know they've begun mass excavation and foundation work as well. They will be pouring concrete within the next few weeks. Um, we will also be discussing an intergovernmental agreement with Cook County for our Invest in Cook grant, perhaps at our next Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, I'll be formulating a request for proposals for engineering on this project, which will also be before the Village Board for approval. We will be writing the specifications to the federal uh, standards to maximize our great opportunities for the project as well. Uh, thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. <coughs> Reports of trustees, standing committees, and comments. Public Service Committee Trustee for New School.
Asian report that had about three hundred thousand dollars in it, and the last one that you sent me had about a thousand left. I mean, Asian on the Asian report, but then it went back up to one thirty. Can you tell me why the disparity in the um, Asian report? I know a lot was paid, but okay. First thing I should ask is, can we have a list of those payments that was made? Because that seems like an awful lot of money between. The only thing that changes the agent report is the accounts payable um, uh, list. So once this um, the trustees approve that accounts payable list, that agent report goes down. So the first one you saw was prior to the last round of payments. And then after we made that round of payments, we have very little outstanding that shows that we're current mm -hmm. on all of our, um, our uh, obligations. And it goes back up again right before we make the next payment. So if you approve this, that'll go back down again. So we should be able to have a, a detailed ledger <coughs> that shows all the payment for that period. Yeah, and that okay. detailed ledger is this one right here. Okay. Yeah. So this is our down payable report. So that's your detail letter. Okay. The accounts may have the detail letter? Yes. Okay. Well, we usually get a report. That's fine. That is the report. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, what you get is the agent report prior to the payment, and then you get the listing of what you approved to be paid, mm -hmm. and that draws down your aging report. Okay. All right. For the Public Service uh, Committee and um, I'm going to say you have, I have no report for that. However, my comments is that everybody has the freedom of speech. We talked about this last, uh, <coughs> last week, and <coughs> I don't care who it is, cannot stop a person from speaking their truth. You know, we have a constitutional <coughs> right to speak the way you want to speak and say what you want to say when you, you say it as long as you're not, uh, it's not in conflict or causing injury. That's part of the Constitution. I understand everybody doesn't agree with everything I say, because believe me, I know from the president here on the board, but it's unfair to stop, stifle the residents from speaking their truth. We get unruly, residents get unruly, the mayor gets unruly. But we, not, we need to hope that this is, this is my turn. So I need to say that, I need to say, that everybody should be respectful to everybody else, but you should be able to speak whatever you what need to say, whatever you need to say. Some of the things that come, you know, that you talk is not quite right. Some of the things we say are not quite right. But we should be able to speak what we need to say, you know, say what we need to say. And nobody should be able to stop you from talking. And that's against the law. This is oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Um, but the last thing I want to say about is that in order to get our um, uh, judiciary duties done, we need reports. And I've asked for reports from uh, the finance director, so hopefully we'll get that and we can go on with the business. But we need to get some reports in order to get some work done. You know, there's no sense going out there speculating about stuff. We don't know. We right. need reports, and you need supporting documents for anything you put out there. It does not matter if somebody doesn't agree. It's your interpretation of what's going on. You have, we need those reports. It's as simple as that. And we need to be able to say what we want to say in a comfortable atmosphere where you can get your words out, OK? One person should be able to tell you they can't say what they want to say. It's <laughs> against the law. It's That's, right. that. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, last week, uh, I did invite Gerald out to come to my committee meeting uh, where we discussed the cybersecurity policy. Uh, Gerald and I will, uh, you know, kind of work on that, and we'll get a draft to the uh, to the board. Hopefully, we can uh, adopt a, uh, a proposal one day in the near future. Also, just want to uh, comment how this past weekend we didn't have a chance to go to IML. Uh, I was a little disappointed in the uh, the classes that were well the, the sessions that were uh, held this year versus last year. They just didn't have uh, as much content as last year. But overall, still, I feel like it was a good conference. Um, 
definitely had the chance to network with some uh, other elected officials and just hear their problems, uh, just like we have in the village here as well, and just how they solve them. So overall, I definitely uh, felt like it was worth it, but I'm hopefully next year that you know we can get some better content in those uh, class, in those sessions. Uh, and that's all that I have. Thank you. I'll put in the government relations for next day. Ordinance Review Committee, Trustee Linda Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Ordinance Review Committee will meet on October 8th, 6.30, here in the Rotunda. Also, um, we will be um, presenting to the Board of the Committee on the Whole next week two ordinances to be reviewed and then hopefully voted on. And I have two more that um, I have the attorney looking at, and once I get those, then I'll be put it in the committee as a whole. Now, Marva does have the two ordinances, so they should hopefully be in. I, I think she's going to email the packets, is what it sounded like for her report. And I have a comment. We go on about the social media. One of the things that I was looking at, and it has to do with the Sauk Village, Illinois. People think that is an official web page, and it is not. And what, I just, what I read was an aging report was put out there with Hank's administration. And the comment that was made with that, what are the trustees doing about that? Well, I wasn't in the Hank's administration. I'm in this administration. But what concerned me was the aging report. To make residents believe that our aging report in that September was $11,000 when in fact, the aging report that was dated September 21st was 169,000. Now we know that it goes down when we do the accounts payable. But if you're going to put out information, put the correct information. A lot of the pages that I read and I see that there's misinformation, that's disturbing. Most of the time I don't comment. I will comment when I see that something's wrong. But I want the residents to know, and as I was reading Sock Village, Illinois, which I don't want it that often, the stuff that was put out there about hateful and the residents, and I mean, I, could, I, and I printed it, but I'm not going to read it. So if you want to talk about social media, I would appreciate that I have seen that Marva has taken, e, you know, the E! News, which the E! Blast, the E! News, lets us know what's going on. But sometimes she'll share something from Sock Village, Illinois. That should not be shared. It is not an official Facebook page. Now, if you want to do an official Facebook page, make sure that it says official. The other towns do. And put the information out. We talk about open and transparent. It's not always open and transparent. Not with the trustees, not with the residents. And so if I, when I'm asking a question, I expect it to be answered or be open and transparent with it. That's right. So that is my comment when we talk about social media. We, we see it. A lot of hateful stuff out there. A lot of, a lot of things. But when I read this with South Village, Illinois, which was sent to me because I do not go on it, about the aging report, and you want to talk about the Hanks administration and what, uh, what uh, us trustees are doing, I was not part of that. Huh. I am part of this. So, I would appreciate if they're going to go out with Sauk Village, Illinois, and it's going to be shared with the e blast that you actually come out with the Sauk Village, Illinois that's an official page. And that is my report. Public Safety Committee, Trustee Justin Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Public Safety is not having a meeting next Wednesday, October 3rd. Instead, we are attending night court across at the police department. Uh, so, um, our committee members have discussed that at a meeting last month. Um, we may or may not have a meeting at a different date next month as to be determined just yet. Uh, I too wanted to comment about IML. I attended several of the days um, last week and I too was a little bit disgruntled with the sessions. I didn't think they were as beneficial as they were last year and, and maybe it was because I had you know, the benefit it wasn't my first time, or, or so, I'm not quite sure what, but the one thing that I, I, I guess maybe was what I liked the best about the, the event was on Friday, they had invited the candidates for governor 
and the uh, Attorney General. And it was unfortunate that Prisker didn't attend, um, but Rauner did. So you only had one perspective, you didn't get both perspectives. Um, but, and, and I'm not saying one way or another, but the one comment that I took away from what the governor was saying in his remarks on Friday was that, and, and you gotta remember this is at the state level, and, and I thought it was appropriate for what we're trying to do here as well, is that you can't tax everybody all the time. You can't tax your way out of this. He was very adamant about that. He kept repeating it that, you know, and he's using it as a, a, a you know, an election ploy, obviously. Um, and you see that in his ads. But, you know, he, he was very much talking about the fact that he was talking with lots of businesses and trying to bring companies into the state of Illinois and the fact that it is about economic development and that's a lot of what we're trying to do as well because as we've talked about at other meetings here yeah it's it's difficult because when you've got TIF districts and, and things like property taxes they've got to stay within the TIF districts but the, the the other ancillary revenues that come with that the sales taxes the business licenses and and things like impact fees those go into the general <coughs> fund and that's where we are able to get additional revenues that we otherwise wouldn't have, and that's where the the village as a whole benefits from the economic development, and it's those sources of revenue that enable us to not have to increase taxes. So I just wanted to share that feedback with everybody, and that concludes my report and my comments for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Community Outreach Trustee Ronald Peacock. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Trustees. I have no report on that tonight, but I do want to make a comment. And that's on the First Amendment, right? You cannot yell fire in a loaded movement say that there's no fire. You cannot stand up here and slander people without facts. <clears throat> Things, if you don't have facts, you just can't make a statement. That's how you wind up in the court with a lawsuit. That's my comment. Remember that. I see it still says community outreach. Yeah, until we, we, I think until we amend that ordinance, it really should say parks and recs. So I know that you were going to work on that so that we can add it into if you're going to make that a standing committee. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, new business. I'll entertain a motion to approve accounts payable and disbursements dated 9. I'm sorry, what about Charles? Um, He's not here. Oh, you didn't get one? I didn't get one from him either. Okay. This is from the city advisory come out, uh, council report from Tuesday. Our um, next meeting for advisory council is on October 11th and all our law. We have finalized our second trip to the seniors to the Four Winds Casinos on this Friday, September 28th from 8 to 3.30. The cost again is $35 for the $25 credit towards food and gaming. We do have room for a few more add-on, but your money is due immediately. The health fair for the seniors is October 11th from 10 to 2, and we should have plenty of vendors, including Gen Care, Oak Street, Silver Sneakers, U.S. Bank, Walgreens, Humana, AARP, and more. Please come and join us. Also, the seniors are walking every morning, Monday through Friday, in the park behind Village Hall. Meet us there at 7 a.m. for one hour. Game night is every first and third Friday. Please come out and invite your seniors who bid with the other game. Also, our first senior luncheon will be held November 16th, and all seniors are invited. Lunch will be sponsored by the Eastern Stars, and we're expecting a little early turkey dinner to be featured. And that's all that he has. Submitted in the proper chairman of senior advisory. Um,
New business, I'll accept the motion. I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the accounts payable on this first date, September 25th, 2018, in the amount of $284,983.43. Mr. Mayor, I am asking for a motion to remove the salary from the accounts payable and Strother. Um, there seem to be an ongoing um, issues with the payments for these two particular um, employees, uh, but the trustees uh, no salary or has been set or approved by the board, nor has um, the appointment been approved by the board either. But uh, in the case of Strider, we don't know. There's still a conflict between the 17 hours versus the 17:45, 7, 17 and uh, hours and 45 minutes. And we've been, been trying for uh, quite a few months just to get a clear answer on what should be done. Trustees are supposed to be approved for appointment, which has not been done. And also, Strider, there's a conflict of in, uh, is with the issues burden on how much she should be paid. So I'd like to uh, <coughs> establish those until we get it straightened out. We would really like something in writing to straighten it out. I know what somebody's saying, everybody's saying it, but nobody's putting it in writing. So we would really like to know what's going on and what we should be looking forward to salary wise. Because if she's supposed to be approved by the board, then that's approval. Mm -hmm. If she's uh, supposed to get 17 hours, let's approve that. If she's supposed to get approved 17.45 hours, let's approve that. It has to be some kind of written something that says what we're supposed to do. Then we can put this stuff in bed instead of keep going on the over and over again. So I don't see any reason why we can't get that stuff in writing. Is that the motion? Yeah, that's my motion. Is that a second? Okay. Losses. I was second, lack of second. I will still entertain a motion for the accounts payable on this person. September 24th, 2018. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Carter. Any other questions? I have a question. Actually, I have a comment. Trustee Brewer is correct. Dr. Strother keeps coming up week after week, or actually accounts payable after time. And this is not a personal attack for Dr. Strother. I can tell you that this board voted on 17 hours. Mr. Mayor, I gave you what we voted on after a board meeting. And nowhere in there does it say she can have $6,000 a month Ooh, or 17. No, it does not, because I pulled it. What you gave me was something that Dr. Strouder typed up. I have what we approved. Okay. I asked for that second to um, be approved. I asked that second to be approved. I didn't second it. You asked for questions on this. Okay. And because Dr. Strouder keeps coming up, and because it's, paid, it's, a, it's accounts payable after accounts payable. And I know what we voted on because I keep all my paperwork. Now, it needs to be looked at because as far as I'm concerned, if we're supposed to pay her 17 hours for what the board voted on, she owes us some money. And now when it comes to her negotiations, how long are these negotiations going on? Where are we at with these negotiations? We need to get a report as to how long these, you know, where are we at in the negotiations with the police department? And I think it's also with public works. Okay. Um, I know we've looked at invoices, and I've voiced this before. They're very generic as to what her what she's performing for us. Yeah. This is not a personal attack. We're here to look out for the money Thank and what we're getting. And that's my comment. Um, trustees, you both come in the village as often as you want. You know when these people are there. You could easily ask that question. If you don't get those answers, I'm usually there. But as far as I would get, 
I will get that information to show you what was going on from the uh, clerk to show that particular uh, minutes and how much it was going on, how, how that wording went. So I will make it my, my business to, to get to take care of that. Um, as far as um, the interim, you're right, it's exactly what it is. I appointed her as interim until such time that I bring it to the board for a full time or for a person, uh, a person, whoever it may be, um, my recommendation for uh, the finance director. But right now, sitting in that seat, I have a person that's doing interim, yes. And the salary was the same salary that we had for our um, before, uh, and I explained that to, to the board when I did with, 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 with uh, all that, 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 that happened. So to say that uh, it needs to be voted on, yes, it does. If it's made a full time director, yes, it will be voted on. It will be brought to the board and the board will vote But right now, I'm not going to do without a finance director and then wait until such time. I have to continue to do business and keep business going. And until the time when I will break the full board, uh, when I decide to make that position uh, permanent and make that, whoever it may be, a permanent uh, financial director. And I will also get that other uh, that information to you. Uh, but if there's any questions that you have about anything on accounts payable, like I say, we're here every day, especially on um, Judy. Do something that's here today, so and she stated today. It's a question that you have, and no problem. The next thing, as far as ongoing um, litig uh, litigation and um, uh, contracts, yes, that's ongoing. Yeah, we, we're still in contract talk with the MOP and with the U.S. and, and with the uh, public works in front of So that's, that's ongoing. Uh, I think we're ready to start arbitration, I think it is. And uh, when that starts, I will let the board know in the executive session exactly what is going on um, and what, what the arbitration will be once they get all the paperwork back and forth. Because they're going back and forth. I haven't finalized anything yet, but they're going back and forth, and I guess that's what they do. But when I get some concrete, it's always I bring it to the board, and I bring it to the board personnel in the executive session. There's a motion and a second. Comments were asked and answered. Madam, I'm sorry, uh, so uh, Trustee Sue. Uh, I'm sorry, Trustee Sue. Brewer? No. Carter? Yes. Grant? Yes. Tates? Yes. Todd? Yes. Zupon? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> motion to approve the ordinance issuing the general application box in one of more series in an aggregate potential amount not to exceed $2.5 million for financing and the cost of certain capital projects. Last week we had a meeting on this and uh, what it really states is they're going to refinance um, our TIF bonds paid for through TIF, no, no, nothing, uh, the bills are being paid for the work for them, all this, everything, the bonds, everything is paid for through TIF, but they're not to exceed $2.5 million. And the reason for that is the um, ongoing maintenance that's over in the TIF area that have to be done. And uh, it's something that needs to be done, hasn't been done since the TIF has been in, 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 uh, in existence. And we were able to get our bonds refinanced and pull money out to take care of that. It's only, it's only for TIF related. Anything in that TIF, and that's over where we're packed, and then across the street where Chicago Air Power and, uh, is located. So those two TIF areas right there that they would uh, uh, be doing work in, uh, whatever work that needs to be done, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. If anybody's been back there, the streets are starting to crumble now. So this doesn't cost the village anything. We never had a chance to actually take our bonds and refinance them because we weren't able to. And now we're able to do that and um, take that money and fix the streets in the TIF area only. 
It would be nice if we could do it in the village, but the village doesn't have bonds, and we can do that too. But we have to still rely on our, our um, TIF, I'm sorry, not TIF. We have to rely on our um, motor fuel and CDBG to do our streets. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this here is just for the new bond. Uh, however, this does not include uh, restructuring, well, refinancing our current bonds so uh, that we get the savings. I think that's going to be a separate orders, I believe. Yeah, I, I'm with Trustee Green. I don't see any verbiage in here about the refunding of the other bond. Okay, if you, if you look at... Unless I, in my speed, really missed it. Uh, I think it's the first where it has. And your, uh, did you have a copy of it? Yeah, okay, you got a copy. That's not, no. No, this was the 2002. 2002. The, uh, the 2008 and ordinance that you have before you tonight authorizes up to $2 million in new money. The refunding of the um, existing bonds will be included as part of this transaction. However, there's no need to execute another uh, ordinance for the refunding purposes. Why not? It's because you're, only ref you're refunding the existing bonds. You're not issuing new money on the, the existing bonds. The authorization is to authorize the $2 million of new money. Or two point up to two point five. And just to, re I'm sorry, I'm speaking to the audience, Mr. Mayor. I know I'm not supposed to do that, but just to refresh, refresh everybody's memories, the refunding is to take the 2002 A bond, refund it. It keeps the existing maturity date. It will have a lesser interest rate. So the net effect with that refunding is we will save. A decent amount of interest by doing that refunding. This is to finance capital improvements within the TIF district itself. Correct. All right, so based on that, I'm sorry, did you make a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, yeah. and um, Section 3 publication, does this have to go before the electorals meeting to be um, voted on? It will be published. It has to be. It will be, it will not be voted on, it will be published. And, and, and after the Excellent. end of that publication, they'll have a, uh, uh, a hearing. Today is when? A hearing. The 30, the 30, it says here, 30 day period. So I'll make a motion to approve this. Uh, so moved. Second. I move by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Lupin. Any more questions? Yeah, I have a comment. I have a question. Madam, uh, 